Actually, it's so interesting. So my my training is musical theater. Okay, I I as you already know, I have a lot of training when it comes to <sighs> style singing. What a beautiful day. Which is great, but I found. Oh shit. Shit. I basically have a lot of really bad habits. That huh? October patches have always been for surprises. What? Well, this time, more than whatever happened during the last year. We got new additions to redeem regions, be it enemies and areas to farm, potentially some new gears to chase, lots of quality of light changes across the board, because why not? And of course, how could it be the October patch if it doesn't bring unexpected balance adjustments for several classes and weapons in NTS? I'll also cover the one that happened a couple months ago as well, to see what changes had happened to both so far. So once again, let's talk specifics. According to the recent announcement, SEGA has decided to keep a selection of ranged weapons in NGS, some noticeable additions. Each receives its adjustment to better enhance the gameplay, alongside a new skill called Long Range Advantage, LIA for short, which boosts the damage dealt with PA or techniques against bosses, while you are not being targeted by them, alongside somewhat strict conditions. LIA will often apply during multiplayer contents, allowing applicable ranged weapons to contribute more and opening new opportunities to pursue. Having your bow PAs deal 15% more damage is pretty huge. Considering how boss aggro can fluctuate in any given encounter, you now have more reasons to utilize various bow attacks. Whether it is letting nearby arcs to engage first so you can line up all your bow nukes, or double down on ranges up to avoid getting aggro and reap the benefit, anything works as long as you know how to use the bow. Getting aggroed by the boss is inevitable, if you ask me. So, prepare your plan B just in case that happens. Now now, pray tell Argus, what the hell does Bo get from the patch? Glad you asked. <clears throat> Increased Bo attack impact accumulation value for all applicable Bo actions. Bruh. If you're pretty new to the Bo gameplay, I suggest checking one of my previous explanations about the skill first. Gonna need a bit of knowledge here. Knowledge. Otherwise, a short summary is this. Learning the skill will allow bow photon arcs and specific bow actions to generate charges for bow attack impact. When ready, it overrides your bow normal attack on firing and causes your next PA to deal 25% more damage. Thanks to data verifiers, we know that bow attack impact or BRI for short requires 10,000 gauge value to be charged. All applicable bow actions generate specific values, increased versus higher tier enemies such as most bosses in NGS. With the data as the baseline, you can try to remember these values, but most will just play it out and let intuition determine how close you are to get it ready. October 2023 patch jumps the value of several actions by... Uh, a whole lot? Uh? Wait, hang on. Mochi mochi my dude, are the numbers on these bow actions correct? Really? Okay then. There's a bit of an anomaly, but it is what it is. Judging from the numbers, you can expect to be charging your BRI twice as fast now as long as you keep up the pace. It can be somewhat overwhelming to take in, so let's, let's look at some notable changes that you should know. First of all, the bow finisher of Braver Combat now instantly grants BRI, similar to your bow photon blast. Combined with the earlier adjustment that cuts its cooldown, with all related skills learned, to just 45 seconds. This Braver's core skill can help burst down enemies harder, even more so during down or break. You can also double stack BRI with a skill. The payload delay from bow finisher is long enough to fire the current BRI and stall the damage buff to avoid wasting it. Nice. Second, Ceaseless Draw also receives a decent treatment. Uncharged version can be used as a more efficient attack to fill the remaining gauge alongside any other PA. The charged version, on the other hand, provides over half the gauge generation that you can chain it back to back when doable. Third, Dimensional Ray gets a massive bump, especially for its uncharged version. Huh? As long as you can keep the target in its area effect, the PA can Another quickly accelerate your BRI accumulation to have it available in a very tight moment. Fourth, the adjustment on charge frenzy fireworks combined with Dimensional Ray can almost instantly generate BRI in a heavy mobbing scenario. Furthermore, 
you can also treat Bow Attack Impact as a regular PA assist point, being a slightly better uncharged flex arrow that doesn't cost any PP and grant a charge iframe as well. With that said, here's the update on examples of commonly used PA strings to fill up the gauge. Efficiency is the keyword here, and this can open up more rooms for clever usage of both PAs. Although we have more BAI to spend, problems exist and it can get real worse without proper gameplay attention. You may have to be pretty conservative with bow attack impact sometimes, especially when fighting bosses due to the percentage scaling of the damage buff. Even though you can dump it on whatever PA that crosses your mind, spending it on the right PA at the right moment should yield more output in the long run. The faster BRI timer can also feel weird oh no. and can arrive at a very undesirable moment. You will need to be more precise with your attacks. Your priority will get messed up a lot. You will have to improvise, ignore countering moments, or even perform the unthinkable. To the point that it causes discontent to some, or even feel like the adjustment barely does anything to bow at all. It is still a noticeable indirect damage buff for the bow, no matter what. In the end, you will be the one who decides on how far you would go with bow attack impact accumulation and utilization. Remember the good old combat chart shown in the other video? We can slightly adjust it a bit better to fit this patch. Hmm, much better. What? It might seem overwhelming and there's a bit of strangeness here and there. Let me explain more. First of all, if you have seen a couple of bow gameplay showcases, you realize that the weapon has been abusing Encore Jump for quite a while now. Although it provides most charge-centric weapons and unignorable above damage in some scenarios, it is an extremely niche tactic that only applies to a few bosses in NTS. Therefore, if the target allows it, you might want to learn how to incorporate Encore Jump to bow gameplay to crank out DPS in a very really strict, time-constrained encounter. It will feel uncanny at first, but you'll get used to the move eventually. The second is just the usage of Katana. Sure, the goddamn weep inducing weapon is still the face of Braver, considering whatever happens since early Kawaris patch. The blade has faced its highs and lows throughout the days. No one can deny that the katana can do well when the boss plays into its strength. Getting fast counter chains and finishers, it will still be used more often than its counterpart despite some obvious flaws. However, with increased BI accumulation, its availability, and LIA skill boosting bow output, you simply cannot deny the existence of the bow anymore. At the very least, you can choose to go for a bow finisher over katana finisher for instant BI, hmm. or have uncharged dimensional ray to passively accumulate it for later. Hmm. Otherwise, proper usage and countering maneuvers of bow attacks will help you keep up with the boss when it moves away or you lose its aggro. Hmm. Whenever the boss enters down or break, the full arsenal of bow nooks will do way more than katana for sure. Hmm. As such, here lies the new reality of Braver that you are looking at. The time where you will probably need to learn the ebb and flow of two weapons to get the most out of the class. Well, from someone who mainly plays the bow, I would say that it is kinda okay to only use the bow in the majority of combat encounters. I probably went out of my way too much just to show how things work recently. All the changes we have been receiving over years have finally put the weapon in a pretty solid spot especially with this October patch. The weapon still requires a lot of training to be handled properly, and can use a bit more adjustment to iron out some rough edges. There are places that bow just really suck ass to use, if I have to be honest, having some flaws that, coincidentally, can be easily fixed by just switching to katana. And considering that they are both braver main class weapons, why not just use both these days, right? So yeah, you do yours, I suppose. All of us have our own preferences on how to tackle things regardless. We should be getting something even more cursed in the upcoming future that could greatly change how bow and katana play out. But for now, it's definitely okay to rely more on the bow attacks being a braver. Have fun.